Jacob, how's it going, man? Good. Thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm glad we got all of our uh, inappropriate conversations done before we had to record. But yeah, there's all sorts of inappropriate going on there. You know, it was get, it was gonna it was about to go down that road. But no, the, the reason I wanted to talk to you today is like I'm really getting into different types of competition. Now I know a lot of my audience is getting into different types of competition, whether it's you know CrossFit type things, the, doing the Murph Challenge for charity, or rucking or running, and shooting and CrossFit kind of merge into the tactical games. I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. I don't know how you look at it. Yeah. So I actually heard this story for the first time, probably a couple months ago. I didn't realize it, but um, for the viewers listening, CrossFit, of course, the owner and the person who started, who has since now sold it was Greg Glassman, uh, as we all know. And um, the gentleman who actually started the tactical games, who has now since sold it uh, to someone else, but who started it, original gentleman, was actually private security for Greg Glassman. So it's very, when I had found it, it, I didn't know that at first, but the similarities were like very glaring to me. I was like, man, this is very similar to where I came from, to where I made a living. And I thought, man, this is, this is crazy. And then I realized, oh, well, the guy who was private security started it. It was obviously because he was very influenced by CrossFit. So That's the thing. You do have a, an incredible background at CrossFit. Let's just jump back into that. How? Do, I mean, yeah, you know, People like to work out, but getting into CrossFit's a whole new aspect. One of the last articles I wrote was like, how do you get into CrossFit without pulling out your back? Because I'm I'm damn near 50 and I took my first CrossFit class about uh, what about a month and a half ago. And I'm like, it was great. It was a lot different than what I expected. But how did you jump into the CrossFit arena? Solid clickbait title, Jason. Solid. I would have clicked on it. I would have commented and been like, You're a turd. <laughs> I'm comment. Actually, go back and check. I probably said that. Um, yeah, I think you did. One of the comments was that. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> obviously, the beauty of CrossFit is the uh, ability to skill and the community behind it, right? So, if I have to describe it in one word, it's always going to be community. Mm -hmm. and, and the concept is like you and I can go to a gym, right? Whether it be a Planet Fitness or a Gold Gym or the gym down the road from your house. So we can go do a workout. And that's awesome, right? I can put headphones in. I can go hit my buys, tries, or legs, or whatever the case may be. Um but the big part for people that a lot of people need, because some of some people aren't self-starters. So the big part for a lot of people is number one, you need accountability, right? You need either a coach or a buddy next to you that's doing it next to you. And they need someone to hold you accountable, almost like a coach to be able to yell at you and say, yo, Jason, you're doing that wrong. Because we can't always depend on our buddy to tell us we're squatting wrong. Because, you know, I, the buddy wants to beat us out and now we're having a, you know, a, a penis measuring contest on a squat rack kind of thing. And so... The beauty of CrossFit is the community behind it, the people who are there to cheer you on, to be there with you, and the coaches that drive you forward. And again, I'm biased. You know, I, I grew up, I grew up, I mean, I, I've done CrossFit for since 2013, I think. So about nine, nine to 10 years. Um, I loved it. And again, the other beauty of it is the scalability, right? You can come in and Jason comes in and says, hey, man, I got an injury, I got a knee injury or back injury or you name it, right? I can't do a burpee or whatever the case may be because of, I'm overweight. And the beauty of the sport and hopefully the intelligence of your coach is the ability to scale the thing and say, okay, well, Jason, you know what? Today we're doing this movement, but because of your back, we're going to scale that back down, weight in a different movement. And we're going to do something similar intensity is kind of the goal, but at the same time, I need to make sure that you're protected at the end of the day. And of course, like any job career or position in the world there are always bad apples there are always bad coaches out there that get you injured because they don't know what they're doing um, so I mean, that that exists that, everywhere so yeah it, that definitely exists and you really do have to vet your gym or your box your or coach whatever. is huge your, for vetting coach it's yeah. huge and that's the best thing about the the one i went to here and you know the suburbs of dc is like i found a good center what, what gym uh crossfit fairfax yep been there yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, They're really gym. good people. Very yep. good people. Yeah, they, they, now, they good coaches out there. But well, the other thing too is like, you know, I, I saw some of your videos. I was kind of doing a little research here about the when you're Stop setting me. up your stuff. <laughs> we don't talk about that here. No, that's the thing too, is like when you do these interviews, sometimes you're like, Where are these people coming from? Do they know me? I don't know them. And it's it's kind of neat to see 
when you take the CrossFit aspect of what you're doing, your training, and then you're putting it into your shooting aspect. So, you know, when you go into a CrossFit gym, you have the workout of the day. And I've noticed that you plan your, your training, which I think is perfect. So someone getting into tactical games, you don't just, it's stupid to go to the range and to shoot and shoot and, and waste ammo if you don't have a plan. Yep. And that's the same aspect when it comes to those tactical games. Now, are you doing like kind of like putting together a workout of the day slash for your training for this? So let's actually back up. Let's actually take a step back and say <clears throat> whatever, whether it's just shooting in general, whether you're going to tactical games or just going to USPSA match or whatever the crap you're doing in life, right? From my opinion, we're all busy, right? We're all doing 900 things, kids, job, career, family, you name it, right? So – unless your full-time job is just to shoot USPSA, we need to make sure we plan our time, make sure we have a plan of attack for whatever we're trying to accomplish. Whether you're like, Hey, I want to be a C class shooter or I want to be a grand master, whatever the case may be. I want to compete the tactical games or I want to win or, Hey, I want to be able to get a pull up. We need to have a plan of attack. And that's something I've learned throughout my CrossFit career because that was very integral to doing well. And so when I started shooting, I did it the same way, and it's the same way I would teach a snatch, right? So if you came into the gym, Jason, like, hey, man, I'm ready to learn a snatch. Man, we're going to start with a PVC pipe and the basics and make sure, you know, can you get into a good position? You know, can you even – can we get you into a good position? If not, okay, what's inhibiting you from getting there? And the same can be said for shooting, right? If I'm going to shoot, I'm not going to go – when I first started, I'm not going to go to the range and just start throwing down build drills yeah. all over the place because it looks cool on Instagram. The first thing I'm going to do is, hey, I'm going to spend the next freaking – year trying to figure out how to grab this darn pistol or hold it or draw it uh, effectively. Um, and so luckily I had a lot of people who kind of pulled me aside and kind of taught me very basic things um, and started very basic. And I still do this day. I think I've been shooting for like, like a year and a half to two years. And mm. so I, I broke it down very, very basic and, and I still do. Like you're not going to see me do very, very complicated things because it's not going to do me any good. Sure. It looks cool. But it's the same thing if you said for, shooting anything in general, right? We got to go back to the elemental basics and make sure we're okay before we progress. Absolutely. The basics now coming from a military standpoint and stuff like that, I've always told people, I'm like, you could take an infantry squad. Eh, they're kind of like the freshman team. You could take a Ranger squad. They're your high school varsity. They're your college. And then you take like a green berets. They're your they're college starters. And then, you have the pros, which are like the Delta Force, but they're all doing the same type of the same battle drill over and over. They're starting with the basics. And that's the same way when you get into shooting, you're taking those basic fundamentals and you're making them better. You keep you have to do repetition. And that's one of the really big things I want to have talk to you today about is a civilian jumping into the tactical games, I think is outstanding. I love seeing civilians jumping into shooting sports. And also into these games where they're where you're shooting and you're doing uh, physical activity. So coming from the civilian world, coming from the CrossFit genre, and you're jumping into the tactical games, how would you prepare? What would the yeah. first step you would take? Yeah, so um, it's going to be different person to person, right? Because from my perspective, I came in being, you know, it's it's. 50% fitness and, and firearms, pretty, pretty well done. And so I came in with an, an A++ in the fitness side of things. And then I would say like a D- in the shooting, right? And so we might have someone come in who's maybe a civilian or, or whatever the case may be who comes from a three-gun perspective who might be a little bit overweight and might say, okay, well, I've got an A- plus in shooting, but when it comes to fitness, I'm, I'm a C, right? And so it, it, it's different from person to person. That's kind of the beauty of it, right? Because when we get into CrossFit, from what I'm used to, <laughs> we're just testing fitness. And so everyone's going to come in to a competition very similar to a degree, where, from similar backgrounds. But when you go to a tactical games, usually it's a little bit different because people can come from all different walks of life. So, like, for instance, we'll have our tactical games uh, nationals, so essentially our, our finale of the whole year in uh, two or three weeks in Austin, Texas. And in the squad that I'll be in with all the top guys in this sport, they have they come from just all different walks of life, right? We've got a San Antonio SWAT. You've got little old me who's just a crossfitter who likes to shoot guns, right? 
You've got guys who've done time, done some service, done time, but I've been to jail. Yeah, I was like, whoa, they need some time. They should be playing the road together. We've got felons. <laughs> yeah, they've done time in the service. You know, we've got all different walks of life for people who will be there. And that's the interesting part, right? Because it brings in, it's really cool for me to get involved in a community where there are more and more civilians, as clarification, coming into the sport. I, I wouldn't say, I would say probably we're not at probably 50%, but it's probably getting pretty close. Um, but there's a lot of us that come in and it, it's really beautiful that we get to get involved and learn from people who, lack of better terms, depend on this on a daily basis. Whereas for me, it's a good skill to have. And hopefully I don't ever need it from a life altering circumstance, but if I need it, it's there. So the cool thing about guns and firearms and shooting sports is it's sport, you know, not every gun and not every time you pull that trigger, you're thinking, I'm going to shoot the enemy. I'm going to kill someone. I'm going to take a life. There is something about taking a projectile and putting it on a piece of paper 200 yards away, five yards away, eight yards away, and putting that another projectile close to it on top of it. There's just something about the sport of shooting. You and I think shoot. that's you like call really. My wife, call my wife and tell her that so you could explain it to her so she'll let me shoot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> It's uh, there's something about the shooting sports and I love civilians getting into it now coming from the world of CrossFit coming from a civilian world and not really being a shooter, you're going to start tactical games and you're like, okay, well, I'm a civilian. I could really work out. I want to start shooting. What kind of gear, what, what should people be buying? Yeah, what should they question. be looking for? That's honestly, Jason is probably. The number one question I get is what do I need? Because again, my audience is a majority of people like myself, right? Who dabbled in it shooting, you know, we dabbled in it. We grew up maybe shooting a deer when we were younger, but you know, I couldn't tell you what a hold was or how to clean the rifle. Um, the biggest thing I tell people is use what you got, right? Um, you probably, if someone's coming out and is interested in the tactical games, more than likely they probably already probably own a pistol and a rifle um already probably if not don't go out and buy something that's ridiculously expensive and over the top right so let's just take a hypothetical example someone joe Schmo shows up says hey i want to do a tactical games i say well joe what do you got he's like oh i got a stock glock that i've that i bought but i've never really used i've shot the range once or twice and i've got a i got a rifle out back um that i've maybe done the same thing right because i bought it when it was cool i bought it during covid because how everyone else was buying them um, and I would just usually tell people is you probably need a little bit more equipment, right? Do you have a sling? You probably don't. So let's get you a sling. You, if you're a CrossFitter, you probably already have a weight vest. So that's money. You're perfect. Don't go out and buy some, probably get a placard for that weight vest. And then you need a belt, right? You need a holster usually with second level retention because we're going to be moving around a bunch and you don't want that thing ever flopping out of your, of your belt. And so those are the big things you need, but I always tell people show up what you got, like show up. Run what you have because those, if you learn the things you already own, that's important. Because like we talked about before we started recording, I think the most dangerous person with a gun is a person who doesn't know how to use it. And so you need to learn what you, whatever you're keeping at your bed stand, learn how to use that thing. That way, if you're ever called upon to use it, you know how to use it effectively. So show up what you got. When you show up and compete, then ask people, hey, Jason, you're in the lane next to me. What are you running? Like, what are you using for a rifle and a pistol? And then if you want to change and you really enjoy it, and you think, oh, this is really fun. Okay, then I'll go out and buy a, a different pistol or upgrade my rifle or whatever the case may be, may be. But use what you have is the biggest thing I always tell people. If you're going to spend money, which I'm sure we're going to get into, <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head you off. If you're going to spend money in this sport, do not spend money on gear. Spend money on experience. Go find someone. I would rather we have a... Uh, um, a PRS range about an hour from my house and uh, Lord knows I suck the shooting long range to clarify long range was anything over a hundred yards. <laughs> and so the first thing I did was go found the, the guy who had owned the range. And I'm like, look, I know you don't do one-on-ones cause it's not even listed on your website. And I'm sure you've never thought about it. I say, but you tell me what your hourly rate is and I will pay you on a Sunday. We'll get it done before the chiefs game and we'll go shoot a bunch. And you can explain to me what the, heck MOA even stands for. And then we can go from there. And so that's what they usually tell people is if you've got money in the bank, don't go buy a better pistol. Go find someone to teach you how to use the pistol you have. And that experience will carry over to the metal pistol if you decide to stay with it. So you would be surprised what you could do with the equipment you have. Yep. And you're trained. 
I took my first real advanced course about two weeks ago and it was advanced uh, competition shooting. And then I shot a match yesterday and the difference between how I was shooting before and, you know, coming from law enforcement military, or whatever. And after that training is unbelievable. You need to get training. Even if, if, like you said, if you've never, if you have the pistol in your nightstand, you have a rifle in your safe or wherever, go out there, get some training, it, have a plan, get some training and map it out. Cause if you just go to the range and you're plinking, it's not going to put you under the same, you're not going to get any experience. You're not going to get anything valuable out of it. And one thing you did bring up too, is about when you're going out to these matches and it's the same way with USPSA, IDPA and everything, you're going to find some good people. Some people are going to be like, Hey, you know what? Um, this is what I did when I first started. Cause everybody's been in that position before. Yep. This is a fairly new type of training, a, a new type of event, and they're going to help you. They're going to help you. And if they're not going to help you, someone there will help you. I guarantee it. And you're going to, you're going to have the jitters. And that's one thing I want to ask you next is like that first time you step into the tactical games had, to, I mean, yeah, CrossFit, you've been on a stage, you, you world-class athlete, but now you're around these guys and you're looking around and you're like, huh? Okay. What was that like jumping into your first match? Yeah. Uh, I think the only thing that really gave me jitters was probably the fact that I now have a firearm in my, in my possession. So like, you know, I, I didn't grow up with something like that where I'm competing and running with a gun, right? It, you know, the thing is unloaded and cold, but you know, I'm not running around with a cold firearm still in, in my mind. And so that would gave me a little bit of jitters. Cause it's like, Hey man, if you make a mistake, you know, like, okay, let's say I, I'm at the CrossFit Games and I jump up to a pull-up bar and I'm facing the wrong direction. They said, hey, Jake, we need you to face this direction instead of facing that direction for your pull-ups. And I jump up and I do a couple reps. They're going to be like, hey, man, you know, take this you know, no rep. You need to spin around. If I face the wrong direction with a firearm, I'm kicked out for the whole weekend. And then people are always going to feel uncomfortable around me, shooting around me, right? And so from my perspective, there was a little bit of jitters there because I have a firearm in my possession and people around me need to trust me with that, those two firearms. Um, but luckily, like I said, I'd gone out and got a lot of training with people that helped me out. I would say in terms of nervousness, nah, I mean, I've been in front of thousands of people. I've, I've failed in front of thousands of people on, on a national TV or, or I've boxed in front of thousands of people. So like, there's nothing to me. It's like, eh, it's not, not that scary, but the whole, whole firearm thing was a little bit jittery for sure. I, uh, you know, I'm glad you said that it's, you failed in front of thousands of people, because a lot of people think oh, I've always oh, got to yeah. win now <laughs> for basic, for basic competition, like uh, civilians jumping into it for a second thing. I only like when I Google stuff, it's always like, <clears throat> okay, it's the first, it's always the nationals. It's always this. It's always that. What's are, are there basic tactical games you could start off with? Yeah. Good question. Um, solid question. So again, like I mentioned, I, I mean, I don't want to scare people off, but it's very similar to my mind to CrossFit. So I always compare things back to, so Jason, you show up to the gym and you're like, man, I want to try CrossFit. You walk into the gym. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in an on-ramp course, right? I'm going to say, Hey Jason, you know, before I show you into class and throw you to the wolves, you know, I need to make sure you can squat. I need to make sure you understand. And I'm sure make sure you're not putting yourself in bodily harm in a situation that's going to make you injured because I don't want as a coach I don't want to be that percentage that hurts my members and loses retention. So the tactical games is the same thing, right? So you, if you want to, the first thing you can do is you can do a skirmish, right? A skirmish is a one day event. You show up and uh, I think sometimes they even have gear there for you. So you can literally show up with, to be honest, you could probably show up with next to nothing and someone will help you out because we're all running in very similar gear, right? <clears throat> um, and so you show up, you can do a one day skirmish. It's not a competition there is a leaderboard, but most of the time it's just for you to see your misses and to see your time. So you understand what areas can I improve on? So one day skirmish is usually where people um, start. Uh, from there, you can show up and do an actual event. It's usually two days, Saturday, Sunday. Um, you show up on a Friday night, usually get all your gear checked in. They make sure, hey, you got the right muzzle device. You're not running something that we don't want you to run, for instance. And then uh, you compete Saturday, Sunday. And again, a lot of people show up. And it's just for fun, right? It's not always for personal belief. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to compete. And I want to be the best at it. That's not for everybody, right? Some people just want to show up, test their gear out, have fun with their friends. And that's a large majority of people. And it's really fun to watch that. But yeah, they have regular events. There are two day. And then those events are all throughout the year. There's like 
12 or something like that throughout the year. And they're all across the United States from Oregon all the way to the East Coast. And then the national championships is like the top five from every event. Again, very similar to CrossFit. Get them via the national championships, and that's in Austin. And that's pretty much like the top 40 guys and girls from the whole year. Yeah, I was like, look at it. You know, that's I love YouTube. I love Google and all that. But when you try to actually like drill down and find anything, you just go down these rabbit holes. Now, let's say I want to jump like for me, instance, I'm I'm yeah. getting in better shape and I want to how would I what's a good training plan for someone to start? Yeah. So the first and thing everybody, I tell people knowing everybody's different. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I usually tell people is and this doesn't really help. Uh, the tactical games or myself all monetarily, but this is the best advice I give people is you probably have a gym around, right? You probably have a CrossFit gym within stone's throw, probably unless you live in the middle of Wyoming. Right. And usually I recommend is go into a gym, go find a coach. Again, it doesn't have to be a CrossFit gym. It could be any functional fitness gym, right? Don't go to a gold's gym and expect to get a PT to help you out here. Right. It's just don't go to planet <laughs> fitness. Right. Usually I say, go there, talk to the coach, say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. Because again, for the tactical games, you know, you're not going to see a snatch. Now, will a snatch help you out? Absolutely. Is there a correlation to explosive uh, power and movement? Absolutely. Do we snatch? No. So, can you go into a functional fitness gym and say, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of farmer carries, a lot of sled pushes, a lot of sandbag work. Can we develop a plan inside of a gym, and can I sub some movements out inside of class?" Any coach worth their grain of salt or worth money will help you do that. Now, if you don't feel comfortable, if you want to do things at home, if you want to go a different route, um, <clears throat> the Tactical Games and myself, we actually program uh, online for people that want to go do it. It's very specific for the Tactical Games. So for my, what I program is a lot of um, – it actually has a lot of live fire and dry fire sometimes molded into working out. So, again – Probably not something you're going to do at Planet Fitness unless you want to get immediately arrested. Um, but it's very specific to the tactical games. And it, it also is good for not only civilians, but also, you know, active duty, LEO at the same time. Because how often do you pull your firearm out and you have a you know, 40 beats a minute resting heart rate? Probably not ever, unless you're just sitting at a range at, at your local indoor range shooting. Um, so we do offer training to do that also, but usually those are my recommendations is find a gym around you, find a coach that's worth your grain of salt to help you out and your goals to accomplish whatever it might be. If you can't, or if you want another, something, something specific, we offer online programming delivered right to your phone. That's uh, specific to tactical games. And the other thing I like about this competition world and shooting sports too, for the LEO community, for those people who may actually have to employ a firearm in their life, is it helps them get step. It helps them step out the door. It helps them move, it helps them get that heart rate up again. Cause we know set it, you get sedative and you're just kind of like, nah, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to eat some donuts. I'm not going to do this. Well, it's, it's yeah, definitely, man, it's, again, I've never been in LEO. I've never been a law enforcement officer. And again, I'm not here to crap on anybody, but that's gotta be a tough job, right? You're sitting in a squad car in, in a desk, whatever the case may be. And then all of a sudden, I'm asking you, Jason, gag your car and chase someone down or draw a pistol. You know, you don't got no time to freaking get on a biker and be like, hey, don't, hold on, I'm going to warm up real fast and warm my hamstrings yeah, exactly. up. Exactly. Like, you can't do that. And so having a, a job like that, you need um, to be exploring and testing your limits from a physical standpoint. Now, I will clarify this and say the way you train as active duty or LEO has to be completely different than how I train because I can go out in my barn and work out and destroy my legs today. Right. And, you know, be like a noodle giraffe tonight, but, and that's great. Cause tomorrow I'm going to wake up in my bed. I'm going to sit at my desk and I'm going to do some work right now. You, Jason, you can't go out there and destroy your legs. Cause tomorrow you got to sit in a squad car. And Oh, by the way, you and your buddy's life might depend upon the fact that your legs feel good and you can chase someone or move correctly. And so how you approach fitness and how you approach your working out regimen is going to be a lot different than mine because your longevity and health on a daily basis is more important than mine. Yeah, I love that. You know, a lot of people forget about that. Okay, mm -hmm. you can kill your legs, you can kill your body, you can kill your arms, but the next day you might have to be in a tussle. Yep. So you have to plan your training, plan it yep. around your days, do your leg day on your day off, you know, stuff like that.
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you got multiple, multiple. I'm sure you got multiple days you can rest. Game on. You know, go murder yourself, but not if you're working the next day. Absolutely. So Jacob's the top guy, and he's like, "Hey, you know what? I this is my gear. And this is what I've learned over the past year and a half. What is your setup? What is my setup? Oh, so we're talking, uh, your, dude. Your gear, your gear knowledge is going to be like way over the top. I am nah. blessed. I am blessed to have a um, a gun aficionado, my FFL guy, like two miles on the road for me. So he helps me out quite a bit. But uh, I. And I want to I want to quickly caveat: you don't have to run competition, expensive things to be good at the sport, right? I started out with a with what I had, and what I had was a Walther, right? I felt like James Bond, freaking James Bond showing up, <laughs> you know. Um, most people don't know that James Bond shoots a Walther. I'm not sure if he does anymore, but he used to. He least. does. He still does. Yeah. Okay, good. Just a different model. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, start with the start with the Walther, and an off the shelf Bushmaster nut sock Bushmaster from Cabela's, yo. Hell yeah. yeah. So anyways, I uh, started with that. Nothing wrong with that. Did very well with that. And then, of course, as you do more, you think, I want to change this out. And it gets more expensive. Um, and so currently for a pistol, uh, I shoot an Atlas uh, Titan. Um, so Atlas Gunworks, a 2011 model, uh, 9mm. Uh, the first time I shot that pistol with a 2011 uh, trigger, a 1911 trigger, I should say. Uh, that thing scared the living bejesus out of me compared to the trigger. Uh -huh. I will say the first time I shot that pistol in a safe direction at my range by myself, I did not mean to shoot it down range. Um, cause that thing, that trigger scared the crap out of me. Um, but that's what I currently shoot now for the pistol. And then for the rifle, I'm shooting a ballistic advantage with a vortex on top with the, the whole thing changed out on the inside. Um, and so, uh, and I'm sure that rifle and that pistol will probably go through different iterations throughout my career, especially the rifle probably. Um, but that's the gear I'm running there. And then for the vest, I'm just running, you know, again, you see difference of people out there when you compete, you see the guys who show up who are LEO or active duty, they wear a very large vest, which is totally fine. Don't feel like you have to go out and get a swimmer cut vest. But what I'm going to wear is the smallest stinking. I don't want it to get in my way at all vest. Um, so it's a very low, I think it's a, I think it's a T-Rex arms vest. Um, and then instead of plates in it, it's actually sand packing, which keeps my weight. <laughs> so again, it's a sport, right? Uh, it is a sport. It's a sport. And then for a belt, uh, I'm just running a G code belt. So very cool. I'm, I was just looking at these Atlas gun works, man. Ah, oh, you're killing me. Dude, what? I, uh, what? What? I what love it. it. No, oh, I love yo, it, they're, man. They're, I love it. I'm, I'm great. still trying to figure out where I'm at. Cause I'm, you know, my first competition pistol, I went out there and I shot the Walther PDP. Mm -hmm. I like Walther, but it's yeah. light. It's a very, it's a very light gun. Um, then I went to my SIG 320 Legion, which just has a titanium in it and everything. And now I, and I had a carry optics on it. I'm like, okay, cool. But now I have this, um, I'm using a SIG compact, iron sights, Wilson lower. I put a gray guns trigger in it and it's like the best shooting thing ever. But then when I go to the range and I have my 1911 out there and I'm like, ooh. And I'm looking at these Atlas and I'm like, ooh, dude, if dude. I can get that like 1911 type trigger and that that feel with a nine millimeter, I might have, have to, to go uh, check out these uh this Atlas gunworks, man. I'll have to. You know what you know what I'll do? We'll figure this out. Um because I think legally like, I could probably ship you one, right? And then just have you transfer it and just shoot it. I'll have to because I have one sitting around that I'll have to have you shoot, dude. I it is a game. Change uh, it is lovely. I, it is lovely. To it, but the problem is, good example. Um, the CrossFit Games were, was always over my anniversary, my, my mm -hmm. wife's and I's anniversary. I promised my wife. I said, "Hey, whenever I don't make it to the CrossFit Games one year, we'll actually go on an anniversary trip." First year I didn't make it. It was like I don't know what year it was. We went to Bora Bora. Okay, let me tell you something. Never go to freaking Bora Bora. You want to know why? Because every place you go to from there on out, you will compare to Bora. You'll be like, oh, well, this isn't as cool as Bora Bora. So same thing for the pistol. When you shoot that uh, thing, you're going to be like, ah, well, it wasn't as good as that pistol I shot earlier, you know? <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm looking at my desk and I'm like, I got this. Uh, this thing is so awesome. It's the 320. Yeah. But it's, a, a lot of it's guys just... shoot that at, at the tactical games, honestly. But every time I'm shooting competition now and I'm seeing people with the with the, the different types of 1911 nine millimeters and I'm like, huh, man, if I could have like a single action pole and I'm like, 
Yeah. I don't know. I'm definitely gonna have to check them out, man. Absolutely. Yeah, it's because uh, I might be order. sold on this one. Yeah. Well, brother, I appreciate you coming on and uh, giving me your time. Uh, one thing I do have to say is, are you still boxing? I, uh, I you know what? I actually uh, thought to myself about a week ago. I thought I should put the bag up in the barn because it was probably the great. It was a good. No, you know, it's different than CrossFit. It was a gr- one of the greatest cardiovascular <laughs> workouts I've probably ever done, and also a great skill. Right? How often does snatching really imply and make it a good skill to use in real life basis? <laughs> Not very much, but boxing absolutely is. But I will say I was asked pretty much, was it last year? I was asked to box someone within like six months. I went out and boxed a, a good friend of mine and a, a retired Navy SEAL out in Dubai just as a competition. But uh, I would never probably do it again and compete because that was a, it, a It's an incredible workout. My Both of my brothers are boxers, uh, diamond gloves, golden gloves. And my oldest brother was a machine. And they used to – fight in patterson new jersey which is kind of a little rough area and uh my oldest my older brother now is about to um teach some pro boxers so uh it, I it, love it, the mindset it's for a like, boxer yeah. mm-hmm. i remember i remember showing up and at that time i'm still crossfitting and i remember the guy showed up to, to, to learn to box he goes uh, he knew who i was he goes hey do you do you think you're in shape and I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just, so, just uh-huh. a, an idiot. I was like, well, yeah, I'm in shape. He looks at me and he goes, you're not in this type of shape. And I'm like, I, I looked at him like, I'm about to get, this is like the beginning of every like Karate Kid movie. I'm like, I'm about to get my teeth kicked in. And sure enough, I realized like, again, every sport genre is a little bit different yeah. how they approach fitness. But like that was something I was not ever used to. I, my arms have never felt so heavy in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, kudos to people who can step into a ring because I didn't grow up doing combat sports, especially one on one. And so uh, kudos to the guys who can step into a ring and make a living out of boxing. Hats off to you. I ain't doing it, but that's some tough stuff right there. I'm gonna go watch that as soon as we get off here. I'm gonna go watch that video. I think I I scrolled past it. You know, two CrossFitters box. Yeah, it's a. So. Uh, it was yeah yeah it, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a complete bash. We're, we both have competed for many many years. Uh, together for CrossFit uh, and been uh, friends there. And then he had someone back out last minute to box him. And so they were like, hey, Jake, we'll ask Jacob. He's stupid enough to take a fight and learn how to box in six months. It was probably it was probably the coolest experience of my life because honestly, you're never going to grow as a person unless you do something that completely challenges it outside your wheelhouse and outside your comfort zone. And that is the prime definition of outside my comfort zone, my wheel. I've never been so <laughs> nervous in my life, um, but I probably have learned more from that than anything of any CrossFit competition, any CrossFit games that parents have ever done in my life. So, yeah, it's fun. So what is next for Jacob and where can we find you? What are you, what are you promoting? Any promote anything? You got anything going on? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, essentially right now, um, I have decided to, I, I am not competing. I keep going like this because my barn is behind me. You don't know that though. <laughs> Uh, so I don't compete in CrossFit anymore. I retired in about 2021. Um, that was a, a good run at it. Loved it. Fantastic. I now coach uh, a young teenage athlete um, for the CrossFit Games now. And um, pretty, pretty much just compete in tackle games. That's what I love to do. I work with a lot of companies in this space. Um, a lot of good people. Uh, it's a good growing sport, in my opinion. And it's a good crossover from taking the fitness and now learning a different skill. So it's pretty much what I do now. Yeah. And feel free to throw your sponsors too. Like who, who's supporting your CrossFit? I mean, yep. your uh, tactical games. Yeah. So work with a couple, couple good companies. One of them is of course, Magpul, the guys at Magpul and then the, the, the guys who make great pistols at Atlas. So you can't <laughs> again, I, I, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to send you one and you're going to, you're going to hate yourself. Now you got like, my email. You got my, I'll, I'll, I, I, mean, I got my FFL. Yeah. My, I just texted my FFL. He's like, he's like, we got it, man. <laughs> just kidding. Well, well, I'll make sure to get, get one situation. Way so, I yeah, love it. Man. I really appreciate you having me on, man. This is this is absolutely, wonderful. brother.